So electrical safety is something that, yeah, they, they like to focus on um, in the FFRCA. Um, so let's so electrocution. These are the kind of levels um, that cause different impacts on the human body. So a one miller amp will cause a tingling sensation. Over 15 might will cause, well, you might not be able to let go, and then that might cause death by asphyxia. But you'd need over 75 um, miller amps to cause VF, uh, which would result in a death. And um, this is just a bit more of a detailed um, explanation. So, so, for example, 15 would be severe pain loss of contraction. So we wouldn't tend to go anywhere near that, really, with different or something like that. Um, asphyxia. I think it's just because, yeah, yeah. 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 So James was asking, how does it cause asphyxia? And essentially, it means that you cannot breathe properly, um, and and you're unable to let go to release yourself from the current. So it, you just yes. Um, and also, different biological tissues have different electrical resistances. So, for example, soles of our feet. If we have callousy feet, which I do. Um, <laughs> then that actually provides quite a lot of protection. But once the skin is breached, it becomes much more vulnerable. Um, so later on, uh, I think I mentioned about the, um, when you're in the cath lab, for example, you are actually a lot more vulnerable because you've put capital right in front of the heart, um, which is a lot, a lot more of a conducting material. The harmful effects also depend on the duration of contact as well as the magnitude. Um, and the frequency of the current may also impact the likelihood of VF. So 50 to 60 hertz frequency is sort of the magic number for VF. Um, okay, classification. They do like to ask you about this, apparently, in the exam. So, I know you were saying about this. There's two different types of classification, starting with um, class one, two, and three. So, class one, um, which is denoted by this image here, um, is basically where the live and neutral wires, which are mains powered, will be enclosed in a metal case. And this metal case is then earthed. So this uh, symbol is like the earthing symbol. So that's kind of the best way to um, remember it. Um, the return earth pathway is linked to this neutral star point, which basically is a safety mechanism um, to prevent it from going through the patient's body or from electrocuting you. And also it contains a fuse which will melt if there's a leakage um, and it becomes too large and then that will cut, cut the circuit as well. Uh, class two has this sort of double box symbol, um, which is quite easy to remember because it's uh, also known as double insulated appliances. So an example of this would be a phone charger. If the case is plastic, it's likely to be a class two appliance. And essentially, the <coughs> double insulation reduces the chance of um, you electrocuting yourself. But it's, there's no earthing involved in this one, um, so it's not necessary to be earth because it's uh, doubly insulated with a special material. And then um, finally, class three, these are um, items that are designed to be supplied by an extra low voltage power source. So for example, laptops, um, there is again no earth conductor. Um, but the voltage should be lower than that a person, if a person touches, it comes into contact with it, it, should, it shouldn't actually cause electrocution. And then there is a further classification of medical devices, so type B, type BF, and type CF. The type B um, may also be mains powered or internally powered, and may also have the same um, safety features as I was mentioned in the last slide. But they have different um, maximum allowable leakages. So, for example, the direct current the leakage is 50 microamps for a single fault, 10, 10 microamps with multiple faults. Um, but with AC leakage, it is quite a lot more. Uh, this is symbol for type B devices. Uh, type B F. So the F stands for floating. Um, and so it basically means that all the patient connections are isolated from the other circuits. Um, and that is a safety feature again. Um, and but the maximum allowable DC and AC leakage is the same as the type B circuits, but it is safer because of the floating element. Um, 
And even when 110% of the main voltage is applied, it actually never exceeds the maximum allowable leakage um, because of this um, isolation. And then finally, uh, so that's the symbol for the BF. And then CF is um, basically a, a device that can maybe connect to the patient's heart. So this is the symbol that's quite easy to remember, it's like fever cardiac. Um, and again, it's an F type, so it's a floating circuit. As you can see, the maximum allowable leakage, allowable leakage is a lot lower, even when mains is connected. So this makes it safer for an internal device. So how can electrocution happen? Um, so just moving back to class one devices, um, there were three different safety precautions. So all three would have to kind of go down in order for you to be electrocuted. So you either have a faulty monitor with a leakage current to the case, um, a fault in the monitor earth lead, um, and then the combination of those means that the earth lead would then become live. And then the circuit through the patient is a, like a complete circuit then. Um, and the current will flow through the patient instead of down into the earth. Um, a way in which they um, sometimes make devices safer is to earth things separately. Um, but a problem with this is when the earths are not, are not sort of calibrated at the same zero, so there's still a potential difference between the two earths. And so you can still get electrocuted. Okay. Um, so just bringing back the um, concepts of the capacitors and inductors. So um, capacitive cu capacitive coupling is where you, so, so an example of this is an ICU, where you have a neighboring unconnected device. The patient kind of acts as the other side of the capacitor plate. And so it would behave like a capacitor in which um, the unconnected device has a, um, a current flow through it and it induces a voltage in the patient. I don't really know how that works, either, but that's what capacitive coupling is. It's almost like the patient becomes part of the capacitor. Um, inductive, I'm not sure if this actually happens very often in real life. I don't think it does, but it's a concept that you need to know about. Uh, inductive coupling is basically um, where a neighboring device such as a lighting circuit may induce a current flow by its magnetic field. So it's again almost like the patient is the inductor. Does that make sense? Um, so how do we improve electrical safety and filters? There's a number of ways. So uh, isolated circuits, which is something I mentioned earlier. So the patient is not earth at all. We don't need to worry about the two earths being calibrated together. Um, there is current operated leakage circuit breakers, which are a bit like the fuse I mentioned. So if the fuse melts, then the circuit will stop running. Um, double insulation, which is what I mentioned before, and then just lower voltage um, equipment as well. So um, this is one of the safety mechanisms I mentioned. So um, on the left, this is a domestic class one equipment which is actually thought to be quite unsafe because if you touched a part of the circuit then the circuit would flow through you and into earth um, whereas for a lot of medical devices we have this non-earth isolating transformer and you can see the difference between these two so if you touch something it would there was no current would run through because of this insulated bit or it's isolated um, from the mains. And so this is safer because there's no return pathway through the patient. Um, circuit breakers. Um, so you can see from the image that there's two um, pathways here, L and N. In the absence of any faults, the, the two currents through L and N will be the same. And therefore, there would be equal and opposite magnetic fields in this toroid transformer. Um, but if there is any current difference, then it causes um, a current in the toroid, and that would actually uh, open the switch and disable the circuit. So it's again a bit like a fuse that kind of is there to, just in case something bad happens. And then it's like a, an up switch. 
You'll be glad to hear that I didn't bother doing any MCQs for that bit because it's so boring. Uh, but these are my resources, mainly e-learning for healthcare. Uh, I think I did Google a couple of things as well, um, which is easy to that as well. But if you have any questions, please do let me know. I may not be able to answer them, but um, also e-learning for healthcare is really good. And um, there is extra questions on there if anyone wants to enlighten themselves. Great. So that is the end of electricity and magnetism.